We're coming straight out of Stockholm. The last matches of the finals have been played between Fnatic and Origin. But just, you know, just before everybody leaves, we did manage to catch the fish show. How you doing, mate? I'm doing fine. Very happy about this final. I think everyone got what they were asking for. I don't think they got what they were okay, asking okay. for. <laughs> Those five guys didn't get what they were asking for. But hey, we got five games. Fnatic got challenged. That's exactly what we needed. That is, that is true. They're, even gods can bleed. This was, this was kind of like a, a Leonidas thing, throwing that last spear, just taking the rings off somehow. Um, but, uh, but going into it, I actually have one question, because uh, yesterday, yesterday was your birthday. Yes. It was. And, uh, and, and we've been thinking, actually, how, how do you manage to celebrate a birthday in which you are working all day and completely trashed by the time <laughs> you're done? And you don't even get to drink that night because you've got to get up and do it again the day after. Uh, well, the thing is, you don't celebrate <laughs> that birthday, really. You wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, well, we got a show today. And then you get a few random texts in there. Your mom might, maybe is calling you, being like, oh, blah, 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 happy birthday, whatever. And then you go to work, and people are like, happy birthday, and that's it. Like, the celebration is people telling you happy birthday. That's basically it. Technically, I would almost rather not have my birthday on, on such a day because you're, like, trying to focus on the game, yeah. trying to prepare for it. Uh, but honestly, I just forgot about it fairly quickly until Crepo in front of 5,000 people was like, oh, it's the guy's birthday. And then it was kind of back. But hey, it was fun. Yeah. Look on the bright side, your Twitter account must have been absolutely exploding at that point. Sure. I mean, I like that. <laughs> I always enjoy when people write to me on Twitter. So uh, do it, at Right to Fish There you go. Sell out. So um, to, to, to kind of top it off with some, some serious questions, obviously, um, we saw a lot of diverse uh, play going on and, and, and yeah actually at the same time it wasn't super diverse it seems in the first match Fnatic realized we don't want to face poke because they're better at poke than we are and after that they just completely shut down poke with all the bans mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. and then it was just this kind of tug of war thing um what's what's your I mean what, what's, what's your like your your analysis of, of that process I guess uh, I think what we saw um was Fnatic the team comps, they really enjoy running, often have very low engage. So what Origin realized in game one was, hey guys, we got last pick for XPK, they have zero ways of engaging, let's pick a poke composition. And instead of Fnatic wanting to completely change up probably what they have been preparing for the, for the series, they decided just to remove that poke aspect in the virus and, and take that away. And then it suddenly became a match of who can get the strongest early game jungler in Elise, often being the first pick, and what is the top lane matchup? What ended up happening was Gangplank was a better pick for Zoas than for Huni. He played it mm. simply better mm. than Huni did. So we could see over the series how Origin was like putting less priority on the pick because they're like, we know you're gonna early pick it, but we have now some matchups we like into it, like the Fizz or whatever, we're not mm. afraid of Huni. So a lot of mind games. You saw the last series, like Lulu first pick. Okay, Origin is saying, Lulu, most likely top lane, which means there won't be an engage up there, so we could pre probably go some protect AD carry composition, so they go like Janet Tristana, take that away from Reckless. Mm. Fnatic is like, oh, okay, you want to protect that back line? No, no, he's engaged. Yellowstar goes for Annie, and suddenly we saw like very back and forth here, teams on to counter each other in, in the pick and man phase, and that was very interesting. Few key picks, like Gangplank, Elise, the Tristana was in there, some of the very important ones. And then I think we saw maybe a few problems in the pick and man phase for both teams. Um, Azir was not a strong enough pick for Peke to really carry a game. He had a poor oh. performance in the last game, as an example. So Fnatic didn't have to worry about it, even though it is normally such a strong pick. Yeah. Uh, no Braum coming in for Yellowstar at all, so that was free for Mithy every time he wanted it. And we saw, of course, the gang playing, as I mentioned before, being a lot stronger for Swords than Huni. So it's fun to see how both teams adapted over the series to how well is this guy playing this OP champion. Do we have to worry about it? Otherwise, we can change up the bands a little bit. Looking at uh, a Gangplank now, I mean, obviously, a lot of the picks is also because people haven't quite counted him yet. Mm -hmm. But do you suspect we're going to see, like, a lot of Gangplank for this? But is, is he going to be, like, the new top Sivir, uh, that damn champion that shows up in every game? Uh, we're definitely going to see him a lot. Uh, I felt like coming into playoffs, it was one of those sleeper OP picks. You were just kind of waiting for teams to figure out how to play him mm. uh, and how to use him in comps. Obviously, the barrel mechanics is completely new. It's very different compared to what we've seen before from other champions, so it takes a bit of time. But it was the same when like Azir was released. People in the start were like, ah, not sure. And then one guy mastered it, and they're like, okay, okay, OP, okay, let's all play it. Uh, Gangplank is going to be the same, but... He has a few counter matchups, uh, Riven, 
beats him in lane. Fizz, as we saw, can do really well against him. Mm. And we have seen a lot of top laners pick up those two champions. So there will be ways to play against him. But he's for sure an insanely strong pick. And if you, ma if you master him, you can win games on your own. Okay. Well, um, speaking of Gangplank and speaking of his like uh, his, his introduction into the league as we see right now, I mean, currently um, the p competitive scene is a couple of patches like behind. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that affects the way they play? Do you think that affects their things? I mean, this season now we've seen a larger pool of, of champions picked than usual, uh, but they're also further behind uh, patch wise than they have been mm -hmm. for a very long time. Is there a correlation between this? Is Oh, I think for sure when you are on a patch for a longer period of time and especially now in playoffs where you have like a whole week to prepare for one team specifically, you start seeing, okay, what is meta? What is the expected picks? Like say Callista, you would expect her to be picked if she's open. Mm. That means in order for you to get an advantage in the pick and ban phase and not always be forced to just ban certain champions, you've got to find ways to play around them. You've got to try and find some counters people maybe didn't expect. Or you got to find like the new OP picks, in this case, like the Gangplank. So the fact we are on a patch for a longer period of time does open up for more picks to come in. And sometimes they work, sometimes they won't work at all. Mm. Uh, I remember Gambit mm. tried to play like Tarek, Corky into Callist and be like, hey, we're going to point and click stun you and then try and burst you down. It worked for one game and then the next <laughs> game it failed horribly. So I like to see when teams sit down, play on a patch for a longer time and, and get to really adapt and try all these new picks to find things that work. Because if you just do the same for four weeks, in a best out of five situation, it becomes so easy how to pick and ban against you. That's why also with Origin Fnatic, we saw this back and forth of like, okay, mm. we're gonna give you this pick because we know we don't play that well, but we're gonna get these two guys and now you gotta ban one of them in the next game because it was a counter basically. Uh, and that was very interesting to, uh, to follow. And that's what I really like when we have it a little bit longer on patches. All this, uh, all this analysis, all this like talking analytically and stuff like that. Now you've gotten a bit of competition on the analysis front um, because it seems that they've made like a little clone of you and put it on the desk next to you. So not, not, not only, it's a good clone. yeah, it is. But not only are you like both analysts, you're also both support players. Does does this ever kind of get in a conflict in any way? Absolutely not. Crepo. Recently retired, he's been an active player for longer than I have. So basically what I've done the last two years been like bot lane. It was fun. I'm out of here. I'm going to look at the entire map. I'm going to look at team comms and like the, all the different lanes. Crepo is still so, so good when it comes to just talking micro things in the bottom lane. So I trust his opinion 100% if I ever have anything where I'm, you know, on the fence, what's going on in this lane, what's exactly going to happen at certain times. I'm going to Crepo. I'm talking to him when it comes to the bottom lane. Mm. Uh, he also knows that when we then sit and talk about the rest of the map and so on, we can have very good discussions back and forth. But when it comes to the bot lane, I give it to him. And I respect so much the insane amount of knowledge that guy has about like every single bot lane combination and how every single bot lane combination is doing golems and like the crook mm. or the grump, mm. I guess it is. I don't even understand how, how much time this guy's been using in like a custom game trying to figure out how to do <laughs> these perfectly. And he can get so angry on air if a team is messing it up, being like, no, no, this is wrong, this is wrong. Being like completely cutting off his entire story or whatever just to criticize that one move. So I deeply respect what he's bringing to the table. And getting a guy next to me is by no means competition. It is for sure help because the more smart guys you have in an office together who can talk, who can you know, look at new patches, look at all our regions and so on. It helps so much when it comes to preparing. And I love TriCasting with them. We had a conversation uh, a few months ago. We did. In which we talked about uh, Danes in, in all of this. And we talked about how Danes like to carry. How Danes like like influential roles. That's what we thought. That's what we, I mean. that's what we thought. Danes like to carry. Uh, which is ironic because you were a support. Um, but, look, but looking at this now, uh, Crepo... Is, uh, is also a support, but Crepo is a, a kill securing um, mm. support. So technically he was a carrying support. Yeah. Does that make him more Danish than you? Oh, there's more to being Danish than just <laughs> being a carry, you know? Crepo is very far from being Danish. I don't even see him eat pulsa in the office almost well, ever. I think I've seen him like once. How can you not eat pulsa? Yeah, I don't understand. He's like, 
he goes to this, we have this barbecue place, and he goes like chicken instead. I'm like, dude, there's a bratwurst right there, and you get chicken. I mean, come on. So it, Germany's a sausage country. I mean, they're is. everywhere. It is. But um, one thing Crepo does have is charming. You know, he looks pretty good. So that is very Danish, of course. Yep. Obviously. Uh, obviously. Obviously. So, uh, I mean, we are not the examples, but speak trust for, me, speak, speak for Danish, yourself. Every other <laughs> Danish person. It fits. It, it is a country of good-looking people. But, but actually, on, on a more, uh, on a more like, uh, um, real uh, thing here, the, the reason we were doing it and segueing in, uh, with the rise of Dignitas all of a sudden, Denmark is, is very, very quickly becoming, if not the most represented country, then definitely one of them. And if we just look at, you know, amount of top players per citizen, we're definitely up there. Oh, yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. I think Denmark, even before they joined was the highest, at least in Europe. So uh, we're keeping it pretty real. Yeah. But how do you feel about that? I mean, because since you played, there's not actually been a full Danish team as such. And now one is showing up. What does that, I mean, does that, does that do anything for you? Or are you just like this robot by now that no longer feels? I mean, I'm always super happy when, when other Danes do qualify, but I just think it's super cool. These guys got together, uh, managed to build this up in the challenges scene. A lot of young guys on that team. And again, it just shows how many great Danish players we have, not even just in the LCS right now, but also in the challenger scene and like guys on 15 and 16 who's getting ready to join ah. uh, the LCS. So I, I'm super happy for them. It's not like it, it changes anything for me. It's just cool, you know, the more Danes we get, the better. And uh, who knows, maybe someone there is the new Bjergsen. That, fingers crossed. Um, well, actually, one, one last question, just to, before we send you on your way. Uh, despite all this brotherly love between you and Crepo, because I tried to play him against you as well, and he was deadly loyal, which is a pain. Um, that's love, dude. Um, but, but despite all of this, can we one day s expect to see like a supportal combat where you both kind of face off? Hmm. I hate to be boring. But them don't. I have changed my <laughs> role. I'm no longer a support. I'm playing AD carry now because I want to make sure that when Crepo stops trying so hard in solo queue and he starts dropping down the ladder a little bit, then I'm ready to do a queue with him. You know, I take the AD carry role, he takes the support role. So you will see us one day on his stream kicking some ass. Maybe, maybe we can face off, but I'm not really sure where. He's stronger than me, so I don't really want to get in a fist fight. Oh, yeah, no, we, we've seen him. He's, yeah, he's no, big. I mean, he's getting big. <laughs> he's really working out a lot, and I'm just sitting here on my ass watching replays. So I'm not going to challenge him on that. I can eat more hot dogs than him, though. That is a skill. That is a skill. And with that, we'll, uh, we'll leave you all. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. For more on the LCS, stay tuned to LeapMat.com. Ta.